As movies like Jesus Revolution and Sound of Freedom continue to surprise at the box office, the future for faith and family-friendly entertainment is looking up. CBN's Billy Hollowell talks with industry leaders to find out how they got to this point and what's next. While Hollywood seems to focus on franchises, reboots, and R-rated content to resurrect audience numbers, faith and family-friendly entertainment is reaching new heights. Movie Guide founder Dr. Ted Baer says this hasn't always been the case because Tinseltown has a checkered history presenting biblical content. It's coming back in a big way. So we're actually the first Christian movies, the first Passion Play was 1897. Oh, then there were three in 1898. So they go in waves. Rich Peluso, head of Sony's Christian arm of Firm Films, agrees, saying those waves often led to washouts. When motion pictures first started, most of the content being created was biblical in nature because it was a commonly understood IP, right? Mm -hmm. uh, intellectual property. People knew the story in the book. Uh, and then it kind of fell out of fashion. Uh, and then we saw the second wave kind of in the 50s and 60s with kind of robe and sandal movies. Despite the popularity of films like The Greatest Story Ever Told and Cecil B. DeMille's Ten Commandments, Peluso says it took a 2004 blockbuster to wake up Hollywood to the idea of bringing faith into the contemporary drama space. It took some creative uh, people that started to be able to tell dramatic contemporary stories in a way that had themes that were accessible to kind of the unchurched. And while those things were kind of bubbling up, Mel Gibson released The Passion of the Christ. And what happened was the it was such a massive success that all the Hollywood studios realized that there was this massive underserved audience. They had to pay attention. They had to pay attention. A decade later, other independent projects further exposed the power of the faith audience. The success of God's Not Dead and other projects led critics to dub 2014 the Year of the Bible. PureFlix co-founder Michael Scott remembers the risk of taking God's Not Dead to theaters. That was the first film we had to raise a significant amount of P&A. P&A means the marketing dollars to advertise a film. They call it P&A in the industry. And we basically had to raise $5 million to take out God's Not Dead. We spent a little over a million dollars on the film. We're in six million. That's a lot of money still, you know? And I'm thinking down on my hands and knees, just praying to God saying, I hope the film makes in total $6 million. And as history shows, the Lord answered that prayer tenfold. The opening weekend, God had a different thing. and did almost $10 million and went on to do $60 million. And I think that was a catalyst that allowed us to take that, launch the streaming company, um, do more theatrical films, uh, put more product into the marketplace. And it was just a wonderful thing that took place. Even more wonder what happened after Sony purchased PureFlix, followed by a merger with the TV network Great American Family. Given the overall growth in major studio appeal and faith content, a key question persists. What happens next? One thing that can happen, and I think it will happen, is the studios can put more money into these Christian films. The average budget for a studio film is advertising is 50 million, and the average budget for a studio release of a Christian film like Jesus Revolution is only 10 million. Dr. Baer says bigger budgets can lead to increased awareness in larger audiences, but only if studio executives envision a pattern of success with Christian movies. Hollywood follows these trends. I do believe that you can follow the trends and see what happens. Some companies are taking bold chances with new Christian subgenres. For instance, Peluso is preparing for the fall release of Journey to Bethlehem, a musical about the nativity story. It is a full-on narrative live-action musical with choreography and dance and joy and fun and a villain in King Herod played by Antonio Banderas. So they can expect an incredible journey that is harmonious with scripture, uh, but really um, relatable to people that, are, that don't even know the story. While box office success is usually the gold at the end of the rainbow for Hollywood studios, Scott believes there's a more profound and eternal purpose for faith films. I think our soul and our spirit crave something to be inspired, hope, redemption. And I say that our content, where we can be the light in the darkness. You're in a totally dark room, you light one single match and it chases away the darkness. We can be that single match with a piece of content that will light up your heart, your, your soul. And I think it'll be, 
is, is what people crave ultimately. And actress and director Sherry Rigby echoes these sentiments. I think people really are, they're hungry for family values again. They're hungry for substance, redemption, valued stories about men and women. And so I think we have an actual culture that's looking for that. And the beautiful thing is, is I believe that the Lord has positioned believers in a position so that over these last several years that we've seen this industry come up, we're sharpening our skills. The recent box office successes combined with projects like Journey to Bethlehem and Unsung Hero on the way, we're likely to see a further expansion into new types of faith content. While we wait for that dynamic to unfold, one reality remains clear. The audience showing up is the main ingredient for future success. Billy Hollowell, CBN News. That's right. If the audience shows up, that will dictate if more films are made. And lately, they've been showing up, Ashley, yeah, in, in waves. Absolutely. And I just think it's it's so great to hear that there's going to be more faith-based, family-friendly films coming out of, of Hollywood. I mean, big-name yeah. studios. I mean, Jesus Revolution was uh, Lionsgate, a huge studio. But we just we have to continue to be the light in the darkness. Yeah. It's very clear that Hollywood is a dark place, it, you know, loves to create dark uh, movies and shows, but we have to continue to do the opposite and really do it. I think also in a stealthy way so that we, you know, bring people to know Jesus. Yeah. And so here's the thing, and you mentioned it, like Hollywood can be dark and some Christian families may not go to see a film because it was produced by a certain media entity or studio, right? Who they think doesn't share their values. Mm -hmm. So they will not go to their films. But then when that media entity produces a family friendly film, even with Christian values, and I hear they're not going to see it because it's produced by that company. I think that's a mistake. I do too. If they're yeah. putting out family-friendly films, even with a Christian that's foundation, right. mm -hmm. go support it and say, yeah. we want more of this. Exactly. And I think you'll see more of it. Absolutely. They will listen. Yeah. They'll listen to the money too.